Good morning. I'm Barbara Favola, Chair of the Arlington County Board. I'm in Potomac Overlook Park on a sunny fall day right here in Arlington. Joining me is the Chief Naturalist with the Northern Virginia Regional Park Authority, Martin Ogle. Good morning, Barbara. Good morning, Martin. Glad you're here and we're going to go on a walk through the woods today and uh, see what we can find. What a beautiful setting we're in. Yeah, there's uh, so much that people can miss if they don't get out a uh, little bit and just see what's around them. Just take, for instance, the tree we're about to pass here. This tulip poplar is the largest tree, or one, at least one of the two largest trees in our park, and it's probably about 150 years old. They grow fairly fast, so it's already quite a large tree. My, it is so impressive. It really sort of lifts your spirits just to look at it. Takes it right up into the sky. Yeah. This park must be full of wonderful treasures. I'm looking forward to you pointing out some of the most prominent ones. Yeah, there's quite a lot of uh, very interesting features, both uh, natural history and our human history. Down at the bottom of the hill here, there's a spring site where uh, the farmers built a little rock wall around the spring. Oh! Well, this is the, uh, the rock wall built around the spring that I mentioned earlier, and it was built in 1912 by the local farmers. And uh, of course, it was always a spring, but it would have been kind of muddy and hard to get a dipper in there and so forth. Right. So by putting in this wall, they were able to make an area easy to scoop water out of. Well, Martin, I think I read somewhere that we have two miles of marked trails in the park. We do. And I also read that these trails converge to other trails that would take a visitor right along the Potomac. Um, yeah, you can actually go down to Donaldson Run, one of our streams, and take that all the way down to the Potomac and walk along the river. Wow, that would be a wonderful walk. Now, do you have information on those trails at the Nature Center? At the so, Nature Center. People can come into the Nature Center and pick up uh, a map or other information about our park. So an, an individual could pick their trail based on the amount of time or the length of the trail and have a, a fine time. It would be well marked, safe, and very scenic. Definitely, and we have lots of possibilities in terms of length and scenery. That's great. We're gonna go over a little footbridge over the drainage from that spring oh, that we wow. saw earlier. Up the hill we go. <laughs> now we're climbing a not a steep hill, but a gentle hill. I think it's great that uh, we have railroad ties on these hills, and the trails here seem to be very accessible to a wide range of Arlingtonians, not just those who are physically fit. Well, absolutely. We've uh, laid steps for uh, people so that they can walk a little more easily up a steep section. We also have a place where we've placed a timber here, not as so much a step as a water diversion. We have a steep part of the trail where the water comes down and is shunted off the trail and then the trail doesn't get eroded. So inside this railroad tie is a pipe or a... No, it's just simply the water in front that is uh, channeled off that to the side. It just serves as a, channel. as a channel. Oh, what a great idea. So it ends up making our trails more aesthetically pleasing and easier to walk on Absolutely. as well. Absolutely, that's great. Oh, look at this. This is a really large tree that unfortunately, I guess, was uh, knocked down. Are you going to leave the tree here? Well, it fell down probably about 15 years ago. And yes, we, we leave them in the woods where they fall. If they fall across a trail or if they fall across a road, of course, we remove them. But this is uh, habitat for all sorts of different animals, and it's turning into to the soil, so we just leave it be. Well, I guess this is how nature works, isn't it? When it first fell over, it was about twice as wide. It's been slowly decomposing over the years. Very interesting. Do you think there's a, a snake in there? Well, who knows? Maybe a, a <laughs> raccoon down in the thicker part of the tree. Oh, well, we certainly don't want to disturb the wildlife. Well, we'll leave this tree to be and go see another uh, okay. spot in the park. Okay. Well, Martin, how would I find my way through the park if I, I didn't have a tour guide like yourself helping me? Well, you could pick up a, a map at the park, and uh, if you look over here, there's a trail blaze right on the, on the tree and it's colored white. That designates that we're on the white trail here. And so you could uh, correspond your walk to whichever length or uh, um, area of the park that you wanted to by following the, the colored blazes. Martin, it's fall. It's my favorite time of year. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, what the Potomac Overlook Park really goes through uh, during the fall season? 
Well, as you might expect, we have the beautiful change of leaves in October, and there's uh, things that the animals and plants are doing to get ready for the winter, and we uh, spend uh, a lot of time telling school kids about that very uh, topic. And uh, it just so happens that we're here at the site of the seasonal Indian village, and that also tells us about fall, because we think that the peoples that lived here about 2,000 years ago were around here during the spring and the summer, but then in the fall went back to the, the areas around the Chesapeake Bay to live. Be because of the weather, the weather because conditions. Because of the climate and because sure. of the food availability and so forth. Absolutely. Yeah. So the, even thousands of years ago, people uh, had a, there was a big influence uh, on those people by the seasons and the changing uh, times of the year. Martin, thank you for that uh, brief uh, historical summary. It's an interesting place. Isn't yes, it? it is. I'm anxious to learn more about our next spot. All right, let's go see what we can discover. Well, we're out of the trees, and I see we're coming to a, a lovely open space. My goodness, is that a sundial? I haven't seen a sundial in a very long time. It is a sundial. We've placed a sundial here in this open space along with a lot of other features to kind of uh, tell people about the history of this land. Uh, the sundial and the Indian Circle Garden uh, tell us how important the, the four directions were to people. And here with this particular item we can tell the time. It looks like it's just a little after 12 noon by where the shadow is striking on the sundial. And uh, all around us you'll notice some fruit trees. And back in yes. the early 1900s this was an orchard and it was uh, uh, run by Miss Fanny White who would sell her, her apples up in, in uh, Cherry Oh goodness! So in memorial of that, we've planted a little orchard ourselves, and we have pears and apples and And do plums. you harvest the, the fruit? What's left over from the squirrels, we do. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to ask you, what are the other opportunities for uh, walking tours here in the park? Well, as we said, people can come on their own, of course, but they can come as a group, or they can sign up for one of our uh, um, pre-scheduled programs and people can call our park or look on our website to find out information about that. And so there's lots of ways to get involved, but one way always is just to come and take a walk. Do you have a phone number? Our phone number is 703-528-5406. Thank you very much for joining me today. It truly was a pleasure, and I have learned a great deal about Potomac Overlook Park. Well, thanks for coming. I'm Barbara Favola, and this concludes our walkabout in Potomac Overlook Park. These walkabouts are sponsored by the Walk Arlington program. If you would like to learn more about Walk Arlington, please contact the Walk Arlington webpage. Thank you for joining us today and have a great day.